Warning, this video features a redhead drinking alcohol. Therefore, young children probably shouldn't watch based on what's going to be said. Naughty words. Um, I'm going to be saying naughty words. Remember that time Superman used hypodermic needles to kidnap someone? I do. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Storytime where we take a single comic issue, this could be an origin story or just a random story I really enjoyed, and we retell it. Today we're going to be talking about Action Comics issue number four, published in 1938. And this is in celebration of Batman vs Superman being released next month. And if you watched my five times Superman took it too far video, this story might seem a bit familiar. So grab your adult beverage and let's begin. The comic starts with a drunk, irresponsible driver speeding through the streets. Then abruptly, a shrill shriek and a sharp impact. The drunk has hit a pedestrian. Frightened by what he's done, the motorist hits the accelerator and flees the scene in terror. A crowd gathers around the man. He's in agony! Get an ambulance! High overhead, a figure which has witnessed the tragedy springs into action. It is Superman, champion of the weak and helpless. Oh good, it's the champion of the weak and helpless that has a wonderful track record by this time in action comics. Surely he's going to get the man to the hospital before he succumbs to his injuries. His great leap brings him down beside a railroad track, almost plunging him into the side of a hurtling train. Super Superman, you just watched a man get hit by a car. He's bleeding out on the sidewalk. You sure you can't get him to a hospital real quick? I maybe see if the scene needs any help? No? Oh, okay. Far ahead on the track and the train's path, the hit-and-skip car has stalled. Within the engine car? Now is me chance to sneak a little hip while his back is turned. Looking outside, he sees a figure streaking past the train. The man cries, Mike! A man racing us! Running faster than the train! I saw it with mean own eyes! Okay, I'm sorry to sound a little Irish, and that's very racist. To my Irish viewers, if there are any, I apologize for my insensitivity. Drinkin's again, eh? Superman beats the train to the stalled auto. I guess that's a no. Superman will not be helping the man in agony on the sidewalk today. Superman tells the driver, We've got to jump! The man cries, Let go! You fool, you'll kill us both! Luckily, Superman jumps out of the car with the man just in time. Woo! Just made it. But this fellow has died of a heart attack. But no time for dead people. Superman leaves his corpse on the ground and seizes the edge of the train window for, like, no reason at all. Why are you on this train? Why did you just leave that corpse in the grass? Why do you keep leaving bodies on the ground? Into a private room in the Pullman car? Uh-oh. Someone's entering. Yeah, probably someone with a fucking ticket, Superman. Three men walk in as Superman crouches into a hiding spot. One man says, we can talk here without being overheard. Another man asks, why has the train been stopped? It hit an auto. Can someone please tell me why Superman illegally boarded this train, left a corpse in the grass, and another man to slowly die on the sidewalk? Anyone? The men continue. If I don't win this game against Cordell University, it means I lose my position as coach at Dale. I'm determined to win at any cost. In that case, we're the men for you, Coach Randall. You'll find our services expensive, but effective. Are we hired to play on the Dale football team? The coach answers, you're in. But remember, I want you to get Stevens, Burns, and Lewiston, our foe's best players, right at the beginning of the game. Leave it to us. After the three depart, hmm, a crooked coach hiring thugs to play football. Sounds like the sort of setup that I like to tear down. Yeah, who gives a shit about murders, robberies, and people dying on the sidewalk when you can stop crooked football coaches? The next day, Clark Kent, newspaper reporter, examines photo clippings of Cordell's football material. Here's a youth named Tommy Burke, whose general build I resemble. Tommy it'll be. Within the privacy of his apartment, Clark puts on some makeup grease paint. Splendid. Now his own mother wouldn't know us apart. This is Golden Age Superman to a T. He was like a magical, disguising disguiser. That evening, Tommy Burke receives an ultimatum from his girlfriend, Mary. Burke asks her, You mean you don't want to go to the movies with me? No, or ever. I'm ashamed of you, Tommy Burke. 
But in the six or seven years, I don't know, I don't keep track. You've been a substitute. You've never gotten into one game. I suppose you'll be looking for a new boyfriend now. Wrong. I already got one. Wallace Dodd, the tennis champion. He's a real athlete. You want to know what, man? Don't worry about her. She sounds like a basic bitch. Later, as Burke walks homeward, depressed, he is totally unaware that he's been trailed. I'll show her. I'll make the team. I'll be famous. And then I won't even look at her. Superman approaches Burke. Don't move. What is this, a holdup? Good lord, you're me. You're mistaken. You're not looking at Tommy Burke's substitute, but at Tommy Burke, the greatest football player of all time. But Burke lurches forward, confused why a man dressed like him approached him in the middle of the night talking like a psycho stalker. But then he instantly feels the sting of a hypodermic needle and he loses consciousness. <laughs> Jesus, Superman! <laughs> I just want you to think about this for a moment. Superman first left a man to slowly bleed out on the sidewalk. Then he left a corpse in the grass. Then he illegally boarded a train where he heard about a crooked football game. He then decided to go out and get some hypodermic needles. I don't know, maybe Superman has those stashed at his home. Maybe he didn't actually have to go out and buy them. And he got some drugs. He disguised himself as a man, stalked the man at night, and then drugged him and kidnapped him. Are we all on the same page right now? Okay, good. Burke regains consciousness to discover himself a prisoner in his own apartment. Burke cries out, What have you done to me? I can't move. Superman, the absolute fucking psycho he is, replies, You needn't worry. You've just been rendered passive by a drug. Ho oh, Is that all, Superman? I'm going to take your place in life for a few days. So long for now. So what is this guy going to do for a few days? Is he just gonna lay in his bed and piss himself and slowly die of dehydration and starvation? I'm sure Superman will come back before the, the dying of starvation or thirst, but... What about the pee in the bed part? Pretty sure this dude is gonna lay in his own piss for uh, a majority of the day. Or days. Disguised as Burke, Superman reports to the locker room of Cordell University, where football practice is taking place. Well, here it goes. Wonder if I'll get away with it. What, Superman? What are you wondering you'll get away with? Assault and battery? Kidnapping? Breaking an entry? Drugging a man? Identity theft? No, I'm sure you'll be fine. Superman enters the locker room, greeting the players. One responds, Well, well, if it ain't Tommy Burke, champion benchwarmer of the century. Another chimes in, Get your uniform, Burke. We want to see what a real football player looks like. But Superman doesn't know which locker is Burke's, so he randomly picks one. But it isn't Burke's locker, but another player's. The man approaches Superman, asking why he's in his locker. Superman apologizes, but the man says he'll give him something to be really sorry about. The man punches at him. But Superman grins and eagerly awaits for the man to punch him and hurt himself, because it's the only way Superman can get off. The men watch the player punch at Superman, remarking how he can take a beating, and when Superman is tired of the stupid weak human flailing at him, he lightly taps the man, telling him to go away, you bother me, and sends him crashing into the wall. Two players check on Martin. He's out. Cold. He literally means cold. Superman backhanded him to death, and his body is growing cold. The coach, Oliver Stanley, rushes into the locker room. Why all the noise? What's going on here? Martin? Unconscious? Who did this? Superman admits to what he's done, and the coach tells him to take off his uniform and clear out of here. He's through. Beat it. The football players charge onto the field and commence a practice game. One player remarks, Gosh, coach, things don't seem the same without Burke on the bench. Man, I sure miss seeing Burke on the bench. Not realizing his potential or his childhood dreams. I don't know what got into him. He always was meek as a lamb, but today? In the locker room with Superman? Fine progress, I must say. First get into a fight, then kicked off the bench. What a dirty trick to pull on Burke. Yes, Superman, I'm sure being kicked off the football team is what's going to be devastating to Burke. Not being kidnapped by what he can only assume was a super obsessed stalker that looked like him being drugged, and rendered passive in his own apartment where he can't eat or drink and is left to piss himself all day, 
wondering when the psycho is going to come back and finish him off. Yes, Superman, being kicked off the football team is what's going to cost him a fortune in therapy. But Superman decides he's above the law and decides to trespass once more and go onto the field. The players notice him. Look, there's Burke. He's come out onto the field. Downward soars a football towards an open space in the field. Abruptly, a figure dashes out and snags it. Burke! I thought I'd told that. Grab that man! Give him the bum's rush! Throw him out on the field on his ear! Starting from a goalpost, Superman leisurely trots forward, as every player on the field converges upon him. And Superman gleefully anticipates the new ways he can hurt human beings with their squishy little bodies. Come on! The more the merrier! I can't wait to snap your spines! Superman whizzes past the men. When the football players grab onto Superman, he continues his run to the goalposts. He makes it and declares, and that is that. The coach is impressed, and they plan to put Superman in for the last game against Dale, which will decide the championship. Meanwhile, the papers are alerted to Burke being a marvel, a sensation. In Burke's apartment, Burke asks, What's so funny? This article about you. Good publicity. Is Burke just drinking and chilling with Superman? I guess now we have proof that Superman does come back every night after he's pissed himself enough in his bed, or holds it long enough to get a bladder infection. Although I think men don't get bladder infections as easily as women do from holding their bladder. So, so I guess Superman does come back and check on him every once in a while, and Burke just fucking chills not trying to escape, because now he has Stockholm Syndrome, which... You know, it was all right, I guess. I'm not gonna fucking judge him. I, I worked for Beauty and the Beast. Why can't it work here? At Dale University, this article plays up Burke as a clown, but just the same. I think it would be a good idea if Cordell's star player disappeared. During the following days, the team practices steadily for the big game. I still don't get it. How in the world can a player become so good overnight? Well, you see, first, you need to get someone hit by a car, and then a superpowered alien needs to leave a corpse in the grass, and then he illegally boards a train, and then he needs to hear about some crooked football coach making stupid ass plans to rig a game. It's easy. Why, you can't do it? If you knew, you'd be the greatest coach in the world. Or a sociopath. Pick one. The coach tells his team, tomorrow's the game with Dale. Now remember, early to bed, no smoking, no drinking, no randomly kidnapping men from the football team, and pleasant dreams. That night, the two men enact their plan to steal Burke and find him. He's completely tied up. Strange, he didn't even struggle at all. The two thugs are unaware Burke is under the influence of sleep-inducing drugs. Nope, Superman's still drugging him. He is... still drugging him. The men also don't notice Superman watching them from overhead. When the kidnappers drive off, Superman races in pursuit, easily keeping their auto in sight. Burke is brought into a deserted house. Where, where am I? Please, please don't let that sick fuck drug me anymore, please! Where you won't be able to get into tomorrow's game. But you don't want me, I'm just a substitute, and besides... Are you Tommy Burke? Yes, but it isn't me who... That's all we want to know. This gag will quiet you down. Superman, who has been observing the scene through a window, grins. Loving seeing others do evil, screwed up shit. Fine, they've taken him off my hands. Oh, what a burden you have, Superman. I'm sorry kidnapping a man was so troublesome for you. And they mean him no physical harm. So you're just going to leave Burke with these men that kidnapped him, who you know for the right price will severely injure someone or kill them. Superman? Sometimes, I don't think you're the good guy. The next morning, there's a huge crowd, convinced they're about to witness the most amazing football game of all time. Coach Randall, dropping in on Coach Stanley to gloat over Burke's disappearance, receives an unexpected surprise. Randall, meet the boy who's going to take the game from you, Tommy Burke. Burke, but I thought I... When Superman and Randall are alone, I know the dirty work you've been pulling. If you don't kick those thugs on the Dale team and resign your position as coach, I'll expose you. This is actually much better than the usual threat Superman gives, which usually involves snapping their goddamn necks. The coach replies, I don't know what you're talking about. Later in Dale's locker room, you fumbling idiots, Burke escaped. Now he's going to expose us at the game's conclusion. Oh no he won't. The knife, eh? 
Okay, so we're being shown right now that after the game, they would have to get rid of Burke because he's seen their faces and he would tell on them. So now we for sure know that these men at one point were going to kill Burke and Superman just allowed them to take him. I just wanted to point that out. On the field, the spectators are cheering as opposing teams dash onto the field. The two thugs talk to each other. There he is. When I give the signal, the knife. The starting gun barks and Dale kicks off. Superman receives and is off like a shot. Back in the deserted house, Burke has struggled free of his bonds. He darts into the street. Taxi! To the football field! And step on it! On the football field, Superman streaks down the field and scores a touchdown. The crowd goes wild. Superman scores another touchdown in a matter of a few seconds. But his team is far from happy. Who does he think he is? The whole team? When do we do something? When Ray Martin secures the next kickoff, Superman clears the way for him and another touchdown. But Ray isn't satisfied. Bah! With his running interference, a two-year-old could have carried the ball over the goal. Meanwhile, the real Burke is denied admittance at the player's gate. Instead, he enters the bleachers and sees his counterpart scoring goal after goal. He can't get away with this. I'll call a cop. But at that instant, he hears his ex-girlfriend's voice. And the man with her says, I wish you'd pay more attention to me. You may be a tennis champ, but compared to my Tommy, you're a lily. Suddenly, Burke forgets about the past days of torment, fear, and being drugged, and realizes the crowd now idolizes him. He cheers. Come on, Burke, hit that line. Tear him to pieces. Do not say that to Superman. You never say that to Superman. He will fucking do it. On the field, as a pocket knife snaps on Superman's tough skin, he attends to his two attackers, happily putting them on stretchers. Here, take this note, my resignation, to Dale's university president. At the end of the half, Superman meets Burke outside the locker room. Quick, we've got to exchange clothes. There's no more people for me to abuse, and this is growing tedious. As the second half commences, the ball bounces near Burke. He chases it about awkwardly, desperately, still trying to fight off the drugs that probably forever damaged his system. When he finally snags it, every player on the field piles on him. Later, when he regains consciousness, Tommy, you are wonderful, splendid, but you must promise you'll give up football. It's too brutal. Give up football? You don't know what you ask, but for you, I'll do it. And how? <laughs> what a fucking terrifying story of a man with too much power and no sense of boundaries. So thank you for watching another episode of Comic Book Storytime. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, otherwise Superman will find you and he will snap your goddamn neck. Besides that, come back every week for new Game of Thrones videos, Star Wars videos, comic videos, and really anything sci-fi fantasy that I want to talk about. Because I do what I want. And you can't stop me. Superman could. But you can't. You can't. Yeah, well, I mean, I could think of a few ways you could, but... Superman beats the train. <laughs> Anytime I hear the word beats, my mind goes to such a dirty place. <laughs> just, I don't know. I can't, I can't handle real life. I just can't.